life has his way, <laughs> and he's working out that I'm on this side. So I thought, well, uh, maybe I've not been in, s in such an important university, but there's got to be something for me just to learn by standing here in front of you. And, and, and maybe based on, on my own experiences, uh, first as a model and then as an actress and all the things that I have done throughout my life, if, if you can just, doesn't matter the age, the gender, the, the, you know, the, the race, if you can just go out of here with just one tool or with just one little thing that I might say today or that I might have, might have said already, that you can walk away with and it will help you in your life, then that means it was definitely, for sure, for me, it was really worth coming back for you. <laughs> uh, so I, so I, I, the thing that comes over and over um, to me um, and I think uh, as I look across the room, I can see as well, is this, is this feeling of being an outsider. Um, and I'm sure, I mean, I will ask you to raise your hand if you feel that you're an outsider, because I, I, I still feel that I am, you know? And I guess by being an outsider, I mean just being not a part of the pack. Not being, you know, that, yeah, not being, not feeling that you sometimes, and I, I'm sure at some point in our lives we all had uh, that feeling. Certainly, uh, for me, when we were little, my dad um, used to, he was hired to work at UNESCO, so when I was very little, we moved to Paris, so that was my first language, and then many years after, we moved to Mexico, and I didn't speak Spanish, so that's when I learned Spanish, so I was definitely an outsider. And then we moved to Venezuela, which is my home country, and uh, here I am, like 10, 11 years old, arriving to my own country, with a really funny accent. So <laughs> the kids at school really, you know, I was teased a lot. Um, very many, various things happened that made my family uh, live in really um, <coughs> harsh conditions. Like we lived in the 15th floor and, you know, the elevators didn't work and we had no water. So we had to carry the pockets of water upstairs in the 15th floor. And, but we were going to a really great school. We, but we couldn't tell the rest of the kids where we lived because the school was a, re a wonderful private school where we were on a scholarship and we could not invite them to our home. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely feeling like, a, like an outsider. And I remember uh, just by being in the 15th floor of my house without having the water, you know, like just literally will come at once every three days for 10 minutes or we will bring them up. Um, that my mom was obsessed with watching Western movies in Spanish, obviously, because they were translated. And there was a terrace. And out of the terrace, you will see the bad neighborhood and then the lake. Uh, and I would, I just, I, I used to literally, while my mom was watching the Western movies, just look at the water of the lake and I would cover my eyes not to see the bad neighborhood. Mm. Um, and the sensation of thirst, I don't know if it's because it was a Western movie, the fact that we had no water or because I was looking at the lake um, and, and really feeling a complete outsider. Then I get, I, I go to college a little bit early and then I hire to be work, to the possibility of work as a model in, in Milan. Um, and then when I get, when I get to, when I got to Milan and then, you know, the other countries in Europe where I lived, I always had this feeling because here is there's never really been a Latina girl in the modeling industry who had made it. and even though, trust me, I'm skinny, I'm not complaining about my weight, and I was really skinny then as well, but I had more hips in, in compared to the androgynous look. That, so many designers didn't book me, they would not give me work. So definitely felt like an outsider. So then comes a time where I moved to New York, and when I moved to New York, I can tell you that there were no girls like me looking or representing the big companies in the fashion world or uh, definitely not in the cover of magazines. And then I make the transition into the acting world, and here I am, Latin, I have an accent, very stereotype roles, right? Um, and aside from that, um, I was gay. And I couldn't come out, because I have done Sports Illustrated, I've done you know, all these, uh, these uh, uh, Victoria's Secret, so I, I, I used to get, I still get, quite a bit, but I used to get at least 30 letters a month from correctionals or jails <laughs> around the country. And keep, believe it or not, you know, I, I really did feel that I was gonna betray my fans. It's, if I come out and if I say who I am, I'm going to betray the people that are supporting me. So it's like almost, we talked about this when we were in Sun Valley, it's like almost if you have to check all the things where I would feel that I was 
um, a minority and definitely not included, I would, I would have to fill every single one of those boxes. So I, I thought, well, if this is my situation, then um, that had, at the, at the end, it has, it has led me to make very bad choices because there wasn't really somebody that I could look out for. And I think ego also had a lot to do with, like I know it all, um, which is something that we all have to learn. Um, so, but I thought I can fix it. But at the end I realized that all these mistakes made me just lost everything. Everything that I have earned with modeling that I have put aside, I lost it all. In a company I made the wrong choice and it's funny because my teacher said to me once, think that you've gone to Stanford. <laughs> you will never go to this again. <laughs> and, but he also said, it is, it, you know, all it takes in life for somebody, for one person to be successful, is for one person to believe in them. So, I mean, I'd love for you to just, maybe if you can take just one second and think if there is one person in your life that believes in you. I'm sure we all have one. And if you want to share that you don't, that's fine. You can tell me later. Because you will have somebody that believes in you. And, um, in that, and because I, sometimes I think, yeah, look, we criticize social media so much. And we criticize technology so much. The truth is that I love social media. And I love technology. And I'm Latin. And we love gadgets. And you know, but, but it's also truth that how many times you see people putting on maybe Instagram a photo of them being sad. Mm -hmm. You don't. So you are just getting the perception of the idea of maybe something that, or the life that you would like to have. And of course, that ends up being something that affects you and it creates depression and, 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 and many other things. So I remember this, in th this from this, thing of the perception I was in last week I was in London and I was invited to have dinner with Jeremy Irons mm -hmm. and I was like oh my god like it's got four people in this of course I get to my hotel and I'm feeling like a nobody I'm feeling great but then I'm feeling like I haven't done enough so people see you in a way your fans or the people that respect you and they see you in such a way but yet how do you see yourself is completely different and we, you, we are never really going to have a right idea of who of, of, of who we are, or but what we, what I believe that we, what we can try to do is in those moments where where we're feeling um, that uh, who am I? Maybe I'm a nobody, or maybe yes. It's just if we can just go to the core of trying to make things happen, because I think at the end that is really the only solution that ties in with what we are talking about today in the symposium, um, and and just. One thing that happened to me, and Kathleen knows this, is that a few years ago, three years ago, you know, I felt like in my life there was so much negativity. And I, I, I go to London every month, and every time I will start landing in London, I start sneezing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then I'm like, and I, what is, I mean, I know I'm allergic a little bit, and I know it's a pollen because I'm going into the sky, but why am I sneezing so much? realizing that it was the time when I leave Los Angeles, I go on the airplane, and I will have bread. I have tons of bread, so I thought, maybe I'm allergic to gluten. Maybe it's not actually a thing. Maybe I am allergic. Precisely, I was allergic to gluten. Mm -hmm. So as I decided to, I said, well, I got to stop this gluten, and my life, you know, my body started feeling a little bit better, um, I became much more aware of the people that I was surrounding myself with. It's almost like I became more sensitive just by taking that one step. Um, and then when I was feeling a little bit uncomfortable with the people that I had around, the some people that were that had around me, I thought it is time to clean. Mm -hmm. It is time to clean. All those people that I'm feeling a little bit weird that I have around, they have gluten. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, I'm, I'm going to start cleaning house. And it is amazing just by taking that step, now that you have a, it's almost like you have an empty canvas where you can, um, you know, when you c where you can start, what is it that we do next? We go and try and find allies. Basically, surround yourself with people that you admire. Only that. Mm -hmm. Do only that. But in that surrounding yourself with people that you that that you admire, then listen. 
when we talk especially about the things that, you know, the, what the symposium is about today, key for success, especially in our industry as actors, you know who gets the jobs are not the ones that are going to do the amazing emotions, that are going after their goals, that are going after their objectives when they do a scene or where they're playing in a movie. It's the people that listen. That's how you get the job. That's what the directors are looking at. When you are, whatever it is that you're doing in your life, just listen. Take the moment to listen to the person that is in front of you, and you will be surprised what happens and how you can connect to that. And when you go into those meetings, if you are indeed going to have to go to a meeting, which all of us will, don't go and don't present yourself in this meeting like, this is what I'm trying to get from this meeting. I want to get this money, or I want to get this financing, or I want to, yeah, maybe that is at the core, maybe that's what you like. But when you present yourself, present yourself as, what can I do for you? Because if you walk into a room saying, what is it, how can I serve you? How can I help you? You will be surprised how at the end of the day, everyone's human, and everybody wants to have a connection with another human being, and it will make you very different than everybody else. And, and, on, and on that respect, when you go, let me see what I can do for you, you also have to do that with everyone. Do you know assistants are the most important people? Mm -hmm. They make it or break it. I'm sure that they teach you that here at Stanford. Right? They make it or break it. You just never know where they're going to get. And they are the people that make things happen. So on, that, but, so on that respect, you go, OK, well, this is, this is really what I would like to do. Be careful. Because sometimes, now that we talk about being here, many times we have so much fear. And fear is, unfortunately, the thing that can break us. You know, I was just telling Cameron, wonderful, wonderful Cameron, that I, I met this boy here at Stanford that now is going to be my friend forever. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's amazing. In the morning, I, I land here. It's really early, 8 o'clock, and I, I go and eat something, and right away someone's asking,